give God the praise for our pastor, Reverend Dr. Charles W. Thurman, Jr. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. All right. That was all right. Can we praise the Lord, everybody? Can we give God the praise, just a little more praise on this Sunday morning? <laughs> Truly, God is worthy to be praised. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I serve a worthy God. I serve an amazing God. I serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Y'all, I serve a God who showed me grace when I didn't deserve it. I wish I had somebody in here on tonight. I serve a God who loved me in spite of my faults and my failures. I serve a God of grace and mercy. And because of that, he deserves all the praise. Will you just bless the Lord with me on this morning? Hallelujah to the risen Savior. God, we bless your name. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. And we give you the praise. Y'all, God is good. <laughs> God is an awesome, awesome God. And we worship him today. And we thank God for each and every one of you uh, who are here uh, with us on today. Uh, it is good to be in the house of God with my brothers and my sisters. Uh, Reverend Skinner, you uh, just pushed us on right into worship. We thank God for him coming into your room so he can come into our room. Uh, thank you for leading us into worship. And thank you, uh, Reverend uh, Skinner, for Reverend uh, Hancock, for your prayer and uh, Sister Lewis for reading the scripture. It's good to be here today. How's everybody feeling? Everybody feeling all right? Everybody glad to be in the house today? Uh, we truly give God thanks for uh, who he is, his healing power. Uh, we thank God that um, he's, he's healing and he's continuing to touch the members of this church. We thank God for, for grace and how she has uh, come through uh, the with a new child. We thank God that, that she had a healthy pregnancy and that uh, God is keeping her. And uh, she she mentioned that um, she'd be with us soon. Uh, she wanted to just to share how she was doing. She was doing fine. Um, and she wanted. And then she asked, she also said I could share how, she, how the her little newborn child. Can you all see? Ain't that nice? <laughs> amen amen she's doing well and uh we want to continue to keep her in prayer as she has lost um her father this past week um so continue to keep her in prayer she said the services will be soon and that uh, she will allow us the opportunity to um join in via zoom with her so be looking for that information uh, soon, but we want to I mean, keep her in prayer uh, as she's going through a lot of transition right now uh, in her life, and I'm sure that emotions are are high. But continue to please keep her uh, in your prayers. Um, uh, anybody uh, ready for the word on today? Anybody excited to hear the word? Amen. Well, if you have your Bibles, uh, will you look with me? In the book of First Timothy. Chapter two. Uh, we're going to look at verses one through four. First Timothy chapter two. Verses one through four. And it says, I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them. Intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. This is good and pleases God, our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. 
Today, I would like to speak from the subject of the selective gospel. The selective gospel. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks once again to be in your house today. Father God, whether that house is in our homes, oh God, in our workplaces, God, wherever we may be, we thank you, Lord God, that we have an opportunity to fellowship, uh, to worship you, oh God, not just individually, oh God, but collectively. We thank you, oh God, for every heart, Father God, every soul, God, who is gathered here on today, Father God, to hear a word from you, to be encouraged, oh God. We ask God that as we go higher in your word, we've already been encouraged, God. We've been blessed, God. We ask that you would take us even higher, oh God, in your word. Father God, speak to our hearts and speak to our minds, Father. We need a word from you, a word that comes only from you, God. Not me, oh God, but from you, God. Speak today, Lord God. Speak that we may hear what thus saith the Lord, that we may know, oh God, which way to go that we may know, oh God, what you would have us to do, that we may know, Lord God, what you would have us to say. Our desire, oh God, is to do your will. So show us today, oh God, even if it hurts, God, we open our minds and our spirits and our hearts to receive, God, every word that you have for us on today. We give you thanks in advance, God, for your love and grace. We claim it done in Jesus' name and say it, amen. Amen. Well, today, uh, people of God, I want to bring back to your remembrance the case involving a certain white police officer named Amber Geiger, who was found guilty of murdering another resident of her apartment named Botham Jean. Geiger killed Jean when she returned to her apartment building after her shift ended that day. And instead of returning to her apartment, she entered Jean's which was directly above hers. Uh, when she entered the apartment, she found Jean sitting on the couch. Uh, she, said, she said she thought that he was an intruder. So she shot him in the heart. Although she had a taser, She still shot him. Although she had pepper spray, she still shot him. Although she was trained not to use weapons when faced with deadly situations, she still shot him. Despite the red doormat outside of Jean's apartment, she still shot him. Despite the key lock to enter the apartment blinking red because she tried to enter with the wrong key fob, she still shot him. To me, I think that it was clear and that she perhaps knew exactly what she was doing. Now, now, please forgive me, I'm not drudging this tragedy back up just to get you angry all over again. But my focal point is what happened in the courtroom. I'm not sure if sentencing had taken place yet, but sometime near the end of the case, the brother of the victim who was murdered was allowed to speak. 
And his response angered many, but it delighted others. The response of the brother was to say, I forgive you. And you've all that you've done, I hope that you go to God with your guilt and find some peace. He begged the judge, practically begged the judge to hug his brother's murderer. The judge said yes, and they embraced and they both cried for a little while. This wasn't the only thing that happened in the courtroom. The judge, who was also black, did something that we rarely see a judge do. And that is to shed some tears and to also show affection <laughs> to Geiger by embracing her just like the brother did. This is not the only thing that happened in the courtroom. The bailiff, who was also black, began to comfort Geiger with words as she was crying, while at the same time stroking her hair. As I said before, many of our folks were furious at the brother, the judge, and the bailiff's actions. Some have said that this is a term called slave conditioning. Meaning that the only reason why black people forgive white racists is because we are trying to prove our humanity to them. And there's no need for us to do that because we have nothing to prove to them. People of God, how do you feel about their actions? I mean, really, I, I know you are a Christian and you love the Lord and we just got finished praising the Lord. I know that you're saved and have been for a little while, but, but if you were in their shoes and your brother was killed or you were presiding over the case of this police officer who murdered a black man who was just chilling in his house watching TV eating ice cream. or if you were the bailiff <laughs> who had close access to Geiger, what would you do? Would you forgive? Would you embrace? Would you give words of comfort? Would you wish that she would receive and find forgiveness from God and perhaps salvation from God's eternal wrath. I preached a couple of weeks ago on the topic of liberty and justice for all. Anybody remember that? Anybody awake since <laughs> a couple of weeks ago? And, 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 and you know, I lost about half of y'all when I said that the police officer's life would be better served for the kingdom of God rather than the kingdom 
of darkness. Some of y'all was looking at me strange. <laughs> As a matter of fact, if I can be completely honest, I, I came home to my wife that really wasn't feeling that sermon, if I, if I can be honest. And I understand, I can understand the pain that comes with seeing our people continuously being slaughtered by officers who go on to live lives without consequences. Can, can anybody feel me right there? But, but to say that the police officer isn't eligible for the gospel because of what they've done. To say that they should not get into heaven because of what they've done uh, to us. To say that I could care less about the spiritual well-being of that officer sounds like a selective gospel to me. Sounds like you get to pick and choose who gets it and who doesn't. Now, Pastor, please, let something happen to you, okay? Let something happen to your child, to your family member. I bet you be singing a different tune. Let it happen to you. I bet you be saying something else then. And you know, I don't know what I would do if that happened. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know exactly what I would do. But, but, but what I cannot do is preach the gospel on what I do. I must preach the gospel on what God said. Can I get a witness? Can I get one preacher in the line to say amen? I cannot preach on what I would do. I must preach about what God said. I, 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 I'm called preach his word and not my feelings. Is anybody hearing me on today? Regardless of how much it hurts, regardless if I know I would do it or not, I must preach what God said and not what I feel. Please, please don't shoot. I, I beg you, please don't shoot the messenger. Please don't, don't shoot the message. The, the point is that some of us have a selective gospel where we choose who should get God's blessing of salvation based on their actions. But I'm here to let you know that it's not called the selective gospel gospel is just called the gospel <laughs> and and i need to let somebody know that whether or not you are a liar or a murderer or a thief or a gossiper or a homosexual or a transsexual a, a black person or a white person i need somebody to understand that the gospel is available to anyone who would hear it the gospel is available to anyone that wants it. Huh? All you got to do is just call upon the name of the Lord and the word of God says, you shall, I wish I had for you. Man, I don't care how long you've been in church. I don't care what situation. If you want God, he is available for you. Can I, can I show you 
because some of y'all still don't believe me when I say that the word is available to you. Some of y'all still don't believe me right there. So can I, can we, can we, can we, can I see what God says? Can we see what God thinks? Can we see that? Is that, are you with me on today? Anybody hearing me on today? Okay, well, let's, let's look at verse. screen right there. Can we put up verse number one on the screen? Verse number one. It says, I urge you first of all, to pray for some people. Ask God to help them and harm the rest. Intercede on the behalf of some people and give thanks for them only. Y'all see that there? Some of y'all looking kind of strange. <laughs> Brother Holly shaking his head and saying, no, that's not what it said. <laughs> oh, I was just reading the selective gospel. That's what I was reading. I, I, it's the gospel that we hear when the preacher reads it. That's what I was Reading. Oh, you want me to read the actual gospel? That what you want me to read that one? Okay, okay. It says I urge you first of all to pray for all people. Ask God to help them. Intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Who is them? Is them some people? No, them is all people. Why is Paul instructing his son in the ministry, Timothy, to pray for all people? Why is Paul doing that? Wouldn't Pastor Timothy, who's been a believer for quite some time now, who went to Sunday school and sang in the temple chorus and completed his ordination vows and is currently a minister of the cloth, wouldn't he know that he and his congregation are supposed to pray for everybody? Timothy, don't you know that already? Well, my friend, like you and me, his people were under persecution. See, y'all think that persecution is new. No, 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 no. Y'all think that the only y'all the only ones who have ever suffered like this before. Oh no, the Bible says that there is nothing new under the sun. And that includes the persecution of black folks. Why did Paul have to tell Pastor Tim to pray for all people, you ask? Well, because Timothy and the believers of the time had to deal with the Roman Empire. Anybody know anything about the Roman Empire? Anybody, can you hear me on today? Uh, 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 anybody know that the Romans were some mean, nasty folks? <laughs> and if you not in their way. Oh, they will slice you down. It don't take no anybody know about the Roman Empire who would kill anything in their path. 
You see, being murdered by authorities for unjust causes is nothing new. I need somebody to understand that. God, who is the creator and sustainer of the universe, had been seeing injustice occur generation after generation. He's seen it. He even had his own son killed, y'all. God, the creator, had his own son killed and murdered for unjust causes. He knows the pain, oh my God, that many of us, he is truly a, the God of the oppressed because he has dealt with the very situation of seeing his child slaughtered and murdered because they didn't like him. So does God see the injustice? He sees it. The God who sees it, does he ever intercede? <laughs> That's my question, Pastor. I know he sees it, but I want to know, uh, is he working <laughs> behind the scenes? Is he going to intercede for us? Well, of course, God intercedes. He can't wait <laughs> to intercede on your behalf. But he won't do it if... We don't create an atmosphere for him to do it in. Ah, oh, some of y'all didn't hear me on the day. I said, God will intercede on our behalf if we don't allow him the space, if we don't create the atmosphere for him to do it in. Y'all gonna get this if it's the last thing that I, that I do. If my people, Oh, if my people, I'm going to just stop. Right? I'm not going to even go any further. If is a conditional tense, meaning that you are, that you use this tense to speculate about what could happen, what might have happened, and what we wish would happen. If, and what do you want to happen? Anybody want God to heal the land? Is there anybody? That wants God to heal the land. What well, God said he, he, he will heal the land if. I will heal the land if. If. If my people humble themselves and pray. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? Um, today, <laughs> humble yourself. Pray for those. Here's a pray for all people. <sighs> pray for the ones who are persecuting you. Pray for the ones who are executing you. Intercede on their behalf, the Bible says, meaning plead for them, beseech God for them, cry for them, ask that God would help them see oh, the truth. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. The selective gospel says pray for some people. But the true gospel says pray for all people. Selective gospel says, I'm just going to pray for a few folks. I'm going to pray for the folks that I like. I'm going to pray for the folks who. But, but the true gospel 
It says pray for everybody. Let's 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 look at verse two. Verse two. It says, pray this way for common people and not for all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness. Yeah. Why are you shaking? You're shaking your head again. <laughs> That's that selective gospel again. <laughs> That's that selective gospel. Again, I, I was just reading how we subconsciously hear it. We hear pray for everybody, but we really have some, we really have no intention of praying God's blessing, huh? Over our enemies. Oh, yeah, I need it. Let me read it, what it says. It says, pray for who? Kings. And for all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. Paul goes on to tell Pastor Tim that when you are praying for everybody, make sure that you are specific. Don't just pray, oh, I pray for the leaders and bless the leaders. No, 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 no. Pray, call their name out. Oh, I wish I had some real folks. Can I, I mean, <laughs> can I be honest? Is there anybody like me that said, who finds it difficult sometimes to pray for 45? Can I, can I, can I just get, is it just me or am I the only one in the room? It's like, I don't even want to waste my breath. I mean, for real. <laughs> okay, I'm glad it's. I am not the only one. Paul said, but said, he said to Timothy, don't just say, I pray for your leaders. Call them out. Pray for your king and those in authority. I told you before that not, there's nothing new under the sun. So along with the Roman Empire, the people at that time had to specifically deal with the Roman emperor, who was a dictator. Does this sound familiar to anybody? Who wanted everybody to bow down and worship him. And if you didn't worship him, there would be some consequences. You know, if you don't kiss 45 feet, how I many of he would throw you away? Oh, ain't nobody. He would throw you away so fast. <laughs> With the Roman Empire, if they didn't bow down to worship him, they would be executed on the spot. So very similarly, are young black men and women being executed by authorities because we refuse to bow down and be their slaves. Can anybody see the relationship? Can anybody see that? That there's nothing new under the sun. You see, Paul was trying to discredit Pastor Tim's selective gospel. And, and we have to debunk our selective gospel as well. Paul said, whether you like it or not, your king and the ones in authority over you have a hand in whether or not you live a peaceful and quiet life. Are you hear what I'm saying? Those in authority have a hand. Okay, got that. Look, I know as Christians, we say God is our ultimate authority, right? We say that. And, and, and because of this, some Christians say that, uh, I don't think that the, uh, that the government uh, has a hand in how we live. So, uh, and that's why Christians say, I, I don't need to be involved in politics and I don't need to know about governmental leadership. I don't need to be involved 
and all that because God is the only one that guides my life. Well, that's true. That's true. But God uses the government to accomplish his will. Mm. I'm going to stop there and just let that sink right on in. God uses the government to accomplish his will. Okay, you don't believe me. Look at Romans. Just bring it up right now. Romans chapter 1, chapter 13. Paul was speaking to the Christians in Rome, the Christian church in Rome, about their relationship to the Roman government. And some say that these Christians may have thought that because God was now that their ultimate authority, that they didn't have to submit to the Roman government. But Paul, even if the government was persecuting them, there was the government, the Roman government was persecuting them. So they said, we don't got to submit to that. No, Paul said, let me, let me, let me make it clear to you. Everyone must submit to governing, this is the Bible, y'all, authorities. For all authority comes from God. And I'm helping somebody on today. And those in position of authority have been placed there by God. So anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted and they will be punished. Put me out after today. Y'all gonna put me out? Y'all gonna put me out? But I gotta preach what God said, y'all. I gotta preach the word. Firstly, that's why we need to stay current on the government leadership because God uses the government to accomplish his will. And what is God's will that you ask? God's will is for all the world. God's will is for all of his children to acknowledge him as their father through believing in the, his son, Jesus Christ. That's his will. That's his will, period, point blank. You can argue with me if you want to, but his will is not to make you happy. I'm sorry. His will is not to just be your genie. You rub it, you rub the magic lamp and you get whatever you want. That's not his will. His will is that you repent of your sins, that we believe in his death on the cross, that we accept him as our Lord and Savior. His will is that we grow in the ways of Christ. His will is that you share what you've learned with somebody else. That's his will. And, and along the way, you get blessed for doing his will. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Along the way <laughs> of doing his will, you get his blessing. So what are you talking about? What are, what are you saying? What are you saying? Here's what I'm saying. So if God allowed some nut to get people to acknowledge him. That's what he will do. Read the scriptures, God always allows misfortune or even disaster so that his children would fully acknowledge who he was. All throughout Israel's History. Every time they got off track, God would allow something to occur to get them back on track. Even in the New Testament, nobody ever believed in Christ without being in a misfortunate situation. The woman with the issue of blood, the blind man, the son and the daughter that was dead, the disciples who needed some fish, Paul being blinded on the road. So, yes, even Trump was in his wheel.
But I believe that it moved somebody to truly acknowledge who God. Y'all see that in the text where it says all authority comes from God, right? That does not uh, uh, take out Trump. <laughs> or y'all hear what I'm saying? I, it says all authority comes from God. But here's, 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 <laughs> here's, here's some better news. Uh, we must submit to this authority. Yes, yes, we must submit to it. Whether it's good or it is bad. But it is also necessary that we pray for that leader. Because whatever is in that leader's heart will affect our lives. And we need to be praying so our heart will be shaped to be a man and, or a woman after God's own heart. Even though it was God's will to allow that person into leadership, it also may be God's will for God to change their heart. Are you hearing what I'm saying on today? Oh. And our prayers can change a heart. God can use those prayers to use that leader for the sake. Is anybody, is anybody uh, uh, understanding how important it is to pray for your leaders? Is there, is there anybody feeling me how truly essential it is for the saints of God to pray for those in authority over us? I don't care if that authority is your boss. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care who it is. It is essential <laughs> that we pray for those who God has placed in authority over us. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Point number two, the selective gospel says pray for leaders you admire, but the true gospel says pray even more for leaders you despise. Uh, I'm almost done, and I've almost made a believer out of you that the gospel is available even to dear old Trump. The gospel is available to everybody, but let's make it even more concrete. Let's, let's finish up with verse 3 and verse 4. It says, this is good and pleases God, our Savior, who only wants good people to be saved and understand the truth. Well, I think you know by now that, that the selective gospel has just been read. So let me read what, what, it, what it really says. It says, this is good and pleases God, our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and understand the truth. Does anybody see that there? Huh? This is good and pleasing to God. That, and he wants some folks, the nice folks, the people who don't commit murder. No, he wants everyone to be saved and to know the truth. Paul conveyed this truth to Timothy by way of his own experience. Somebody look at Paul. Look at Paul, Acts 9, 1 and 2. Look who Paul was. Because some of y'all don't understand who Paul really was who the man who wrote most of the New Testament is. I need you to understand who Paul was. First of all, his name, first of all, was Saul. That was his birth given name. And the Bible says that Saul was uttering threats with every breath that he had and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So what did he do? He went to the priest. He requested letters to address the synagogues in Damascus, asking their uh, cooperation in the arrest of many of any followers of the way he found there. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. 
do you see who Paul was? Anybody see who Paul really was? Paul was a Roman citizen, people of God, and wanted every Christian dead. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He <laughs> dead or in chains. That's what he wanted for God's people. But how many know that Paul had an encounter with the true and living king? Oh, my God. Mm, mm, mm. That changed his life forever. Huh? Paul had to tell Timothy, look, Tim, I know you love me now. I know we boys now. I know you've been gaining a lot of uh, 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 experience and you've been gaining a lot of truth from me. But I need to tell you, if you knew me back when, <laughs> you would have hated me. If you knew what I used to, oh my God, to do, you wouldn't be happy right now. I, I just want to know, is there anybody who has ever had an encounter with the true and living king? Mm, 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 mm. I said, I'm only talking to the folks who's experienced God's amazing grace. I'm not talking to everybody. I'm just talking to the folks who was on your way to hell, doing all kind of stuff you had no business doing, but God came your way and he shined a light in your life and now your life has been changed. Oh. Is there anybody <laughs> who's had an encounter? Oh my God, yeah. You can act all holy and sedity if you want to. You can act like you ain't never done nothing if you want to. But I'm grateful for God's grace. I'm grateful that God didn't hold it against me. I'm grateful that God came into my life, that he forgave my sin. He gave me a new name. I wish I had somebody. Oh, my God, who didn't say everything that was they were supposed to say, that didn't go everywhere. Oh. But God was so gracious that he gave you grace. Paul said, look, God, God, God changed my life, Tim. And I was a Roman citizen just like them. I was the one who was persecuting your people just like they are right now. I was that person who couldn't wait to see you dead. But I'm a witness, Tim, that if God changed my life, he can sure enough change this. I, I, I'm a living witness. I'm here in front of you that if God did it for me, that he can sure enough do it for them. So, 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 so don't stop praying for them. Don't Stop believing for them. Don't stop beseeching God. I don't care who it is. Don't stop believing that God can change. Do you know that somebody prayed for you? Or you, or you thought you just got here by your own sin? No, no, no. I need you to know that it was somebody who, who prayed for you. And the reason why you are in the place that you're in right now is because somebody got on their knees to pray for you. You ought to thank God. Oh. I don't, know who it was. I don't know who prayed for you, but you ought to thank God for the one who prayed for you. Y'all, somebody prayed for you. And we got to show enough pray for somebody else. You hear what I'm saying on today? Because your prayers ah, can change a life. God hears the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous. The Bible says they have great power and they pr produce wonderful. I need somebody to begin to pray if my people. Oh, 
who are called by my name, but humble themselves and pray. God said, I will heal. I want to know, is there anybody praying on today? I just want to know, has there anybody been praying? Stop complaining. Stop talking about it. Stop being mad about it. Stop being angry about it. Stop cussing people out. Stop being mean and stop unforgiveness. Get on your knees and begin to pray. I need somebody to understand that God will, he will see you through. I need somebody to understand that no matter what you're going through, that prayer works, that prayer changes things. I need somebody to understand that God will hear your prayer. He hears the faintest cry. I need somebody to understand that prayer will change some things. Prayer will change a life. Prayer can turn this whole country upside down. But the saints, the saints, the saints, the saints, they got to go to praying. They got to go to getting on their knees. We got to go back to the old time way where we used to sit in church for a couple of hours. We didn't mind how long we was in there. We didn't mind how long prayer took because we understood that prayer can change. So I need some saints who would get on your knees and beseech our Heavenly Father and pray for those. We say this is a selective gospel. Says pray that some will be saved. But the true gospel says pray that everybody will be saved. Y'all, so I as I as I as I close, as I recap on that situation with the judge and the brother of the victim and the bailiff, I I would say that it was not slave conditioning that was driving their action, but it was the love of God. It was what they had experienced for themselves. They understood where they were and how God took them for where they were to put them where they are. So they didn't hang their head in judgment over the one who made a mistake. They showed the love of God. And perhaps their love could lead her to salvation. Perhaps the love could lead her to a better life. Perhaps the love could, to, could move her to give her life fully to Christ. Yo, as believers of Christ, let's not practice selective gospel. Let's not, let's not preach a selective gospel, but let's preach a full, a true gospel so that everyone who hears it, no matter your race, no matter your situation, no matter your age, no matter your gender, no matter your sexuality, no matter where you are in life, that if they want to receive the gospel, that they can look to you and you can lead them. To anybody hearing me on today? Anybody hearing me? Oh, you are the salt of the earth. You are the ones God has chosen to show his glory. You are the ones God wants to reveal himself through. And we got to understand that. We got to understand that we can save somebody. That God can use us to lead somebody to his, to his kingdom. He can use us to lead somebody to him. Anybody glad about it? Can we give God a praise for that? Can we give God... A praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us, let us pray. God, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God, for this opportunity, God, to pray even now. God, we ask God for your forgiveness, Lord Jesus. Forgive us, God, for all the various ways, God, that we set in judgment, God. Forgive us, oh God, for turning our nose up at those, God, who we thought, oh God, we, who we thought we were better than, oh God. Forgive us, oh God. For all the ways, oh God, we should have loved, oh God, but we instead, oh God, uh, did not show your love. God, in the name of Jesus, forgive us, God. Oh God, and give us the grace, oh God, to forgive those, Father God, who have hurt us. God, in the name of, empower us, God, to be your children, oh God, that wherever we go, Lord Jesus, that wherever we step foot at, 
oh God, that they would see you in us. Oh God, that wherever we go, oh God, that whoever we come in contact with, oh God, that they would feel your presence, oh God, that you would speak through us, oh God. Father God, even if it's not speaking, oh God, let our, our word, our, 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 our smile, oh God, bring them to a greater place. Let a hug, oh God, bring them to a better place, God, whatever and however you want to use us, God. And whoever, God, you send us to, Lord Jesus. God, your will is that everyone come to know you, that everyone be saved, oh God, that there's not one person left behind, oh God, that all, oh God, may come to be saved. God, that's our desire, Lord Jesus. Before making money, oh God, before making things better for ourselves, oh God, before getting a nicer house, oh God, or a better car, or a better job, or Father God, whatever material things, God, that we want, before all of that, our primary desire, oh God, is that you would use us, God, God, to reconcile your wayward children back to you. We realize, oh God, we know that once we, Father God, do your will, that you will bless us, God, that you will bless us with everything that we need. You will bless us, oh God, in our finances, oh God. You'll bless us in our homes. You'll bless us in our families, oh God. So, oh God, our desire is to be pleasing unto you. Empower us now, oh God. We thank you, God. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Word of God said, it is his will that everyone be saved. That no one not go, not die without knowing who he is. And I want to extend Christ to you even now. If you are not saved, if you have not received him as your Lord and Savior, I don't care what condition that you're in. I don't care how long you've been in that condition. I want you to know that I am a witness that God can save you right where you are. You don't need to try to get your life all together. Let God do that. You just take that step and you give your life to him. You give your hand to him. And I'm a witness that he will change your life. If you want to receive him on today, just repeat these words. Say, God, I am a sinner in need of a savior. I recognize my sin. I ask for your forgiveness of my sin. I need you. I believe that you died on the cross, that you rose from the dead. And I believe that you are the son of God. I receive you in my heart now. I accept you as my Lord and my savior. Guide me to do your will and give me your Holy Spirit. In Jesus name, amen. Amen. If that is your first time saying that prayer, you are saved and we thank God that he saved you right where you are. And if that is you, we, we ask that if you don't have a church home, that you will consider making St. Matthew your church home. Because God desires for us to grow in him, to learn his ways, and to eventually share his ways with others. And a body of believers can cultivate that in you, can shepherd you, can uh, hold each other accountable. And if and St. Matthew is a great place to plant your seed. And if that is you, we ask that you would just, uh, if you are on Zoom, that you would say that in the chat that I want to join St. Matthew. I, I want to put my life here and, and, and be disciple in the ways of Christ. And we want to connect with you. And if you are watching via Facebook Live, uh, we ask that you would do the very same thing, that you would say, I, I'm saved today and I want to join this church. Or I'm sa I got saved today, but I'm still looking what church home I'm going to join, that's, that's, that's fine too. But we want to connect with you and we want to uh, lead you further into the ways of Christ. We love you and God bless you. Amen, amen, amen. Can we give God the praise for that word from my pastor on today? Amen, we thank God, we thank God, we thank God. Amen, even Trey clapping, amen. <laughs> amen. 
Pastor, when you said somebody prayed for you, you was glad somebody had prayed. Yeah, you somebody prayed for you too, Trey. Amen. Listen, somebody prayed for me. That song is on my spirit right now, ain't it? Had me on their mind. Took the time to pray for me. Guess what? I'm so glad that they prayed. <laughs> I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. Oh, anybody glad that somebody prayed for you? Look, I know. I, hey, hey. Somebody pr prayed me up out of somebody's house. Hallelujah. Somebody prayed me up out of going somewhere I didn't need to be. Come on up in here. Somebody prayed me out of the DMs. Hallelujah. Come on. Hello? Come on. <laughs> Somebody pray. Hey, hey, hey. You already know what God prayed you out of. <laughs> oh, well, somebody prayed you out. Hallelujah. Listen. Somebody prayed you out of that cussing spirit. Come on now. <laughs> Somebody prayed. Amen. 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 Listen. That's selective. Ooh, that's selective gospel, y'all. Ooh, we got to be careful. Be careful with what we're praying. You know, you're praying, God, get them. Get them, Lord. Now, look, come on. What the word really say, amen? And we thank God for that reminder, Pastor, of what the word says. Not what we want to make the word to say, to fit how we feel in our needs, right? But really reading it for the word that God has provided, amen, through through um through the men uh who wrote, wrote our scriptures and we just thank God that we can look to the text even when we don't feel like it even when we have some ill will we can look to the text to find the words to say you know my class leader always say teach us how to pray Lord teach us how amen sometimes we got to pray the word of God not our feelings we got to pray the word of God come on because our feelings are fleeting but the word stands firm amen Amen, amen, amen. We're going to keep on. We're going to keep on in this worship with our giving. It's time to give. <laughs> give. And what? It shall come back to you. Good measure. What happens next? Press down. Shake it together and run it over. Amen. Listen, we got three ways you can give here at St. Matthew AME Zion Church. I'm just being me this morning, amen, this afternoon. We got three ways we can give. We can go on GiveLify, which is my favorite way to give, through the app. Come on, millennials. Amen. We don't have checkbooks. Amen. Amen. <laughs> GiveLify. If you uh, download GiveLify on your smartphone app and you look for St. Matthew KC, you'll see the picture of our pastor as well as our church logo. You can just uh, three clicks and you can give. The other way you can give is also on our website, stmatthewkc.org. You can give that way. Or if you're still old fashioned and you and you only trust, you know, you still trust the mail and all that, you can drop it off at the church or you can send it uh, via mail to St. Matthew AME Zion Church, 4400 East Linwood Boulevard, Kansas City, Missouri, 64128. I don't know about anybody else, but I can't wait till I can walk into them doors. Anybody miss the church house? Listen, hey, we've been having church for months and months online, amen, but I can't wait till we can be in the number together, like physically. Oh, listen, we're going to rip up that carpet. We're going to stomp on the devil's neck when we get back in the church. Hey, we stomping on the devil's neck right now, but we're going to really stomp on them when we get back to the church house, amen. <laughs> All right, praise the Lord. Uh, announcements, announcements. Do we have any announcements? Amen. We don't have no announcements. All right, Pastor, come on and give us this benediction. Let's give God the praise as it comes. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Skinner. And thank each and every one of you uh, for your presence here and you not walking out the door and you not leaving the Zoom and shutting down the FaceTime. I know sometimes it's tight, but we thank God that it's always right. Thank God for your encouragement. Y'all, it's not always easy to preach what God says. <laughs> uh, so I thank God for your encouragement and for your love and for your fellowship and um, as well as you receiving the word and applying it uh, to your life. God bless you. It does my heart. It's just so well uh, that God uh, continues to work in your life uh, and he's moving in this community of believers. God is doing a, a, th a thing, y'all, with us. He's doing a thing. I'm telling y'all, y'all gonna see, y'all gonna see.
When y'all come on out of this thing, you're going to see what God has done in your life. You're going to see how much better you are. You're going to see how much stronger you are. You're going to see. I'm, I promise you. You're going to see how God, and he, he's going to do it by using you for his glory. So we thank God just for you and your presence uh, on today. Please continue to keep uh, everyone lifted up in prayer. Uh, to those who are uh, in, in sick, those who are in the hospital, those who are in nursing homes, please continue to keep uh, them lifted up in prayer. Uh, I would encourage you to please uh, come out to Bible study, y'all. We are having a, a phenomenal time, y'all. We are having a good time. Y'all, the Bible said there's a season, and sometimes there's a season to laugh and to be joyful and to have fun. Y'all, this is that season, uh, this Bible study, and we, we're just coming together uh, having fun, but we're also learning, y'all. We're also learning in, in a way that would retain the information. So come out. Uh, we, we are doing uh, learning the Bible in, in, in new ways uh, uh, through various games and uh, do fellowship and camaraderie. <clears throat> so please come out and join us uh, this Wednesday uh, at six o'clock, as well as prayer beginning at 530. And as we continue to fast each Wednesday from 12 to 7. Um, please um, keep uh, in mind the uh, upcoming uh, Harvest Festival for the children. Uh, that is, we're not sure exactly um, what the status is on that just yet. <clears throat> so please be aware of um, some changes that perhaps may be made as a result of that. Uh, we, you will receive an email very soon. Uh, so please keep that, keep that in mind. All right. Love you all. God bless you. Let us uh, bow our heads as we prepare for our benediction. Gracious God, thank you, Lord Jesus, for this opportunity to fellowship today. God, we thank you, Lord God, for your word. God, allow your word, Lord Jesus, to be implanted into our hearts. Father God, that we may not just hear it, God, but we may be doers of your word, Lord Jesus. Father God, give us strength, God, and empower us today. Father God, our desire, Lord Jesus, is to go ye therefore and to make disciples of all nations, God, regardless of where they are, what race they're in, oh God, of all nations, God, to baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, to teach them your ways, Father God. And we are grateful, God, because you will be with us throughout the entire process. We give you thanks and claim it done in Jesus' name and said, amen. God bless you. Have a great week.